Lord, who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful Lord God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, for by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son. Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world. Evermore give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We A reading from Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt, and so that place is called Gilgal to this day. While the Israelites were camped in Gilgal, they kept the Passover in the evening on the 14th day of the month in the plains of Jericho. On the day after the Passover, on that very day, they ate the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. The manna ceased on the day they ate the produce of the land, and the Israelites no longer had manna. They ate the crops of the land of Canaan that year. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 32. We'll read it responsibly by half voice. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven. And whose sin is forgiven. Happy are they to whom the Lord imputes no guilt. And in whose spirit there is no guile. While I held my tongue, my bones withered away. Because of my groaning all day long. For your hand was heavy upon me day and night. My moisture was dried up as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you. And did not conceal my guilt. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Then you forgave me the guilt of my sin. Therefore, all the faithful will make their prayers to you in time of trouble. When the great waters overflow, they shall not be You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like horse or mule, which have no understanding. Who must be fitted with bit and bridle, or else they will not stay near you. Great are the tribulations of the wicked, 
but mercy brings to those who trust in the Lord. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy, all lords of the Lord. is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 16 through 21 from now on we regard no one from a human point of view even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view we know him no longer in that way if anyone is in Christ there is a new creation everything old has passed away see everything has become new all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not, coming their, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that belonged to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare, but here I am, dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a rope, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again, he was lost and is found, and they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked, what was going on? He replied, your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry, refused to go in, his father came out and began to plead with him, but he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I've been working like a slave for you, and I've never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who was devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed a fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you're always with me, 
and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I have to tell you, when I was, I don't know, high school into early college age, I had an LP, an album of uh, music for Lent. Specifically, it was, as I recall, uh, King's College Choir, uh, Cambridge, and their recording of even song during Lent. But the, there was one biblical reading in that whole service, and it was the one we just heard. And in a way, it always, I think, epitomizes and well epitomizes the message of Lent, the message of Lent. Uh, I can still remember the kind of the, 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 how shall I say, the high tones of the reader. I will arise and go to my father, and, and I won't say to him, Father, but but still, but it's a, such a wonderful story. It's a wonderful story. Uh, in a way, the, the other readings today fit so perfectly with it. Uh, sort of like, come to the promised land, the arrival in the promised land. The people of Israel who've wandered for 40 days and 40 years, I mean, in the wilderness and have gone through all kinds of privations and confusions and betrayals and forgiveness and all this, but they've made it to the promised land and they're there, they've arrived. And uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's real, it's a real place that you can really get to. And when they get to, then the miraculous provision, the manna stops, they arrive. So it's, a, it's this, this promise is meant to be fulfilled. It's not just hypothetical, it's not just abstract, it's not just out there beyond the clouds, you get there. And then in the, the New Testament reading, the sense of reconciliation, that this is a time for reconciliation. And we see all that in the gospel. I mean, in a sense, the son, the prodigal son, the, the, the son who's gotten into trouble, if you will, he, he's home. It's not just the idea of being home. It's not just the idea of reconciliation. He's back. He's back. And he's welcome. Uh, and in the sense also that it is a full reconciliation, a reconciliation at least with his father, who's magnanimous, who's generous, who doesn't come out wagging his finger in his face or telling him all the things that he's done wrong or how he's not perfect or how he's let him down one more time, but instead he's just overjoyed. He's back and they celebrate. They, they kill the fatted calf. They give him a robe and sandals for his feet. So that reminds you that he's gotten so bad. He's come stumbling all this way barefoot through, you know, probably rough, rough terrain. But that sense of the arrival. In a way, I think you can look at this story as I've heard one way to look at dreams. And again, it's a parable. This is Jesus making up a story that illustrates what it is that he wants the people to understand. And again, it's a story of reconciliation. It's a story of forgiveness. But it also raises a question. So looking at it as a dream, a way, not the only way, but a way to look at a dream is to see the characters in the dream as different manifestations of yourself. So just play with this for a second, the, the story of the prodigal son. So there's a sense in which we've all of us been the prodigal son at one time or another. As St. Paul reminds us, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've been that character out there like, my God, what have I done? But we've also been given the opportunity to come back, to come home, at least in the heavenly realm. God forgives, and that's the message of Lent. That's the message of Lent. It's not just about shaking a finger in your face and saying, you've been a bad boy or a bad girl. It's to say, we can be forgiven. And this is the time to be forgiven. It's the time to be reconciled and to be reconciled with one another in this season. It's not just hypothetical. It's not just a, a, a heartwarming platitude or something. It's real. It's a, it's a tangible 
place, a tangible relationship, a tangible situation that we're invited into with God and with each other in God's name. So we've been that prodigal. I promise you, if you, I'll be glad to talk with anyone's story. We've each of us been there. But also, there's, there's the, the father in this, uh, the father who's magnanimous, the father who graciously welcomes the son home, who indeed, when he sees him coming, doesn't just wait for him to show up, but goes out and meets him halfway or meets him as far as he can get in the time that he has to be there for him. So it's a reminder how each of us can step up to forgive. Each of us can step up to be available, to welcome, to reconcile. You know, if somebody comes in and you haven't seen them in a long time, well, where have you been? No, I'm just we're just so glad to see you. We don't care. We don't care. We're glad you're here now. But there's also the question. It's the question of the older brother. So at times I've almost been tempted to think of this story as the parable of the older brother as much as the prodigal son. I think he's the one that's the unanswered question as the story ends, the older brother. So the older brother, uh, you might summarize his whole dialogue as, it's not fair. And I just want to say, as having been the, and I still am, but the, the kids are now grown, the parent of, three kids who in younger years uh, from time to time might assert that one or another thing in their lives wasn't fair. Have any of you ever heard anything like that in your growing up space or in your parental space? It's not fair. It's, he gets to go and I don't get to go. It's not fair. He got the chocolate cookie. I didn't get a chocolate cookie. It's not fair. So the older brother comes in. And he says, I've been, you know, I've been working all these years. I do everything you tell me. I've never disobeyed you. I've never had a cross word. And here is this wastrel of a son, your son. And even the language there, I mean, it's sort of like sometimes when, uh, when, when the child has gotten into trouble, it's only because your son has, let me tell you what your son did while you were at work today. <laughs> oh, what did my son do? Wow, well, you know, what did my daughter do? But uh, anyway, so your son has come back. And so in other words, he doesn't see it. He loses the forest for the trees. He's so caught up in the fact that it's not fair that he's getting treated better than he deserves. And truth be told, he is getting treated better than he deserves. And that's, that's part of the parable. Jesus tells us God treats us better than we deserve. Uh, if, if, you know, mere justice is, is not the measure of God's love for us. It's so much more, so much more abundant. So in this moment, in that moment of return, the older brother can't stand it. But the, the father points him beyond that is, look, he was lost and is now found. He was dead and is alive. We're going to welcome him. Of course, we're going <laughs> to break out all the good stuff. We're going to celebrate like you haven't seen in a while. He was dead and is now alive. And so I guess the question is for that part of us that might find something in common with the older son as well as with the prodigal and the father, how will we be in moments of forgiveness? How will we be? Will we rejoice in those times? Will we allow them to happen? Or will we say, it's not fair? So in this season of Lent, it's a reminder to us, a reminder of the generosity, a reminder of the possibility to show people that there's a place for them. We're not holier than thou. We're not holier than them. But we are with them on a road that leads to a completion that we're meant for. Um, like the people of Israel out there for 40 years, we're, we're on the way, and we're on the way to a place that is real and tangible and makes a difference. We're on the way to forgiveness. Stand and say together the nice thing free. We believe in one God.
the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For, for us and for our, our salvation, salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified on the conscious pilot. He suffered death and was buried. On the third of the day, he rose again and on the of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Um, we ask for prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. We ask your prayers for those on our diocesan intercessory prayer list. Church of the Resurrection, Jasmine County, the Reverend Will Berry, priest in charge. Today, in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the bishop, clergy, and laity of the Church of the Province of Myanmar. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or, or trouble. for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed, including William Hargrave. Pray for those who have died. for Marge, Jim, Mabel, Betty, Walker, Beverly, Finley, Nora, Barbara, Laura, Bill, Lynn, Heather, and Janet. We also pray for those in the armed services, both home and abroad, and all who have suffered as a result of COVID-19. We also pray for those in the Ukraine. I invite your own prayers and thanksgivings, silently or aloud. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored especially for the birthdays of Pat Wagner and Mabel Marie, whom we remember today. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Grant, O oh Lord, to all who have been baptized in the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, that as we put away the old life of sin, so we may be renewed in the spirit of our minds, and live in righteousness and true holiness through Jesus Christ our Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please stand in grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Share this with you. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we're able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, proclaim the glory of your name, we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God, power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.